Hey y'all, my name is Mick. Thank you so much for watching this commentary paint. If you'd rather just watch the speed paint, I'm going to put a link to it in the description and put an eye in the sky right now. And I'm going to start by doing something that I don't think I'll be able to do very often. Talk about what's being drawn on screen right now because it's related to what I'm talking about. So a while back now, I really wanted to draw, but I just could not bring myself to sketch anything. Really, I just wanted to color, I guess. So I made a post to see if anyone would be willing to collab with me by sending me a sketch or some line art for me to paint over. And of course, Lilith, ever the angel, came through. <laughs> um, those that have been following me for a while now may know that Lilith and I have done some art trade stuff before, and we run a blog about Heathers together, and I absolutely adore Lilith's art style, so I was super pumped to work on this piece. And what I want to talk specifically about with this piece and in this video is that this is nothing like what I would normally draw. I don't draw gore because I'm bad at it, and I'm bad at it because I don't draw it, but that's a whole nother video. And like, Lilith sent me this picture of uh, Billy Loomis, I think? I've never seen Scream, but Billy Loomis or whoever with blood on him and on its knife, so if I wanted to do this collab, and I did, it is such a good drawing, I had to draw some blood. And that's, I think that's so important because this picture would not have exist if Lilith and I had not collaborated because, as I said, I've never seen Scream and I never draw gore, so I wouldn't have done something like this on my own and Lilith wouldn't have made this on her own either. Be like, obviously the line art would have been made because that was done completely separate from me, but she has such a different art style than I do that this wouldn't have happened. I think. Lilith was done with this drawing, but even if she had added more color to it, it would have looked completely different. This final product, specifically, would not have been made if we had not both worked on it. If Lilith hadn't drawn it, if I hadn't colored it, it wouldn't have happened. And it's, in my opinion, a pretty good piece. And I'm glad that it exists, you know? <laughs> and there are so many things that wouldn't exist without collaboration. Great transition. Visual art? like drawing and painting and stuff is generally seen as less collaborative than other forms of art like music, film, TV, fashion, all that stuff is super collaborative like when you've got a team of a dozen writers or a dozen designers working on a collection or a script that's collaboration or when you've got a group of musicians all working together on a song that's collaboration too even if in the case of music for example only one person actually writes the music if multiple people are playing instruments, like in a band or whatever, everyone has their own unique way of playing instruments, so once other people are playing it, it becomes collaborative. And we, as a society, are more receptive to considering that collaborative than we are with visual art. Like a TV show, we're more likely to think, okay, so this show does have a head writer, but there are other writers for the show, and there's a director contributing something, and the actors are bringing stuff to the table. This isn't just one person making this thing that I like. But with visual art, we don't do that. We're so used to it just being one person making one painting or a sculpture or whatever else. It's unusual for us to see something credited to multiple people. And even when it is, we're more likely to, in our heads, just give one person credit even when it's made by a team of people. But I don't think that we should think it's unusual. It's a really good thing. So many good pieces are created through collaboration. Gert and Uva Tobias are a great example, so they're brothers and they've been making art together for years, and the way that they do it is they will each come up with a concept and then they choose one to develop, and they say when the piece is done whose idea, whose concept it was, so even though they both worked on it, people will look at the piece and go, technically this was created by both brothers, but it was Uva's concept, so it's an Uva piece, when it's not, it's absolutely not. Both of them have their hands on it, both of them bring their own skills and specialties to the table, so yeah, maybe it was his concept, but the piece wouldn't be anywhere near the same if Uva had made it on his own. It's a collaboration, not a solo project. And they work together all the time, basically, but collaboration is also good for artists that don't collaborate all the time, like Andy Warhol and Jean-Michel Basquiat made a bunch of pieces together and even though the first showing of it were absolutely lambasted in the press, they both said that they benefited from working together. And this isn't even getting into artists taking inspiration from another and creating some dope new shit together even though they don't interact with one another's pieces. Like, 
My favorite artistic movement is Impressionism, which started out as just a small group of artists inspiring each other, and then they exhibited a series together, and that was something totally new and innovative, and I love it, and it wouldn't have happened if they hadn't inspired one another. Collaboration. Another artist that I wanted to talk about is Sol Lewitt, because his work is almost 100% collaborative and no one seems to acknowledge it. So what Sol Lewitt is known for is making instructions for creating pieces. Honestly, I think the best way to understand it is to actually see it, so uh, Google it when this video is done. But one example is something like, create a grid. In each space of the grid, paint two of these patterns on top of one another and accompanied with the instructions as like a list of patterns. That's my best guess at the instructions for a particular Soul to Whip piece that I've seen. I saw a picture of the instructions but couldn't read them, so that was what was going on. Uh, it was from wall drawing number 260, if you want to try and Google it better than I did. But I know for a fact that the instructions did not say which patterns to put in each spot on the grid. And then what you're buying is the instructions, and you maybe hire a painter to paint it wherever you want it, maybe you paint it yourself. If you bought it way back then, you may hire a member of Soluit's team, or possibly Soluit himself, to come paint it for you. And the only scenario in which I wouldn't call it collaboration is when Soluit is painting it. Because in the example that I gave, and in most of Lewitt's work, the instructions call for the painter to make their own decisions. Like, in the example, the painter decides which two patterns to put in the spot on the grid and lots of his instructions just boil down to paint undulating lines over and over again, but the painter decides where, so every single painter is going to make different lines and choose different patterns. They're designing the piece! They're following the instructions, but they still have a hand in designing it. And if right now I made a tutorial about how to draw, I don't know, a piñata, and you follow those instructions exactly, and I'm not even talking about the vague LeWitt-esque instructions where you make your own design choices, in this hypothetical, you are following line for line what my tutorial says, and when it's done, you're not going to go around telling people, oh this is a Mick Fielding piece. I know I drew it, but I was following their instructions and it's their design so it's their piece. No, you wouldn't say that because it's your art. You drew it. Maybe you would say you were following my tutorial, but you certainly wouldn't say that it was my art. This is a pre-recorded video. I haven't seen your work at all. So why is it that people say that these pieces are solely Lewitt's work, when not only did others paint them, others had a hand in designing them? And let me be clear, when I say that other people are crediting only Lewitt, that does not extend to the man himself. Lewitt knows that what he's doing is collaboration, he makes sure to credit those who painted them and recognizes that the designs themselves were not born from his mind, but from the minds of those who actually chose what patterns to use or where to put the lines. Lewitt is not the problem here. I think that this ties back into what I was saying earlier about how people just want to credit one artist for a work of art. It's weird for people to recognize that more than one person is responsible. People want for there to just be this one artist that can be attributed to a body of work so that they can analyze the work and build up the artist as a mythic figure, and if people admit that most or even just some of the artist's body of work is made up of collaborative pieces, then they can't analyze it in the same way. If they find a piece that they love, they can't put the artist up on as high as a pedestal because while well, the artist did conceptualize it, it was actually the artist's assistant who designed it and created it. Well, now there's this whole new person that has to be credited in people's minds, and people don't like that. They like to compartmentalize. Even in a movie where people accept that it's a collaboration and that Hollywood movies have hundreds if not thousands of people working on them, they like to sort it as if the writing is separate from the acting, which is separate from the directing, even though all these intermingle and affect one another, and there are more people working behind the scenes that aren't even in the limelight in the same way the actors, directors, head writers are, that are also affecting the way the movie turns out. You can't completely separate any of these elements, yet people do it all the time. Anyway, gosh, I keep going off on these tangents and making these videos way longer than I wanted to. I swear these things are scripted. I just have a lot of opinions, and my main opinion in this video is that Collaboration is really good, it's fun, and it's beneficial to you as an artist, it's just all around a good time! You should get together with some friends and make some art together. Do an art game where you trade canvases every couple of minutes, you know the ones? Start a band, make a little movie, it's all so much fun. And you can think about how that work never would have existed without y'all working together, it's great! 
And also recognize collaboration in other people's works. Don't put all of the blame or all of the praise onto one person. Recognize that it's common for people to work together on projects and that you don't have to work alone on everything. If you don't want to or you feel like you can't, it's perfectly acceptable to work with others. I recommend doing it at least once in your life. Thank y'all so much again for watching. Please send Lilith some love for making this incredible line art for this picture. Seriously, I adored it. Before I end the video, I just wanted to mention an upcoming project that I have that you can get involved in. It's about the Septimus Heap and Todd Hunter Moon series of books. Both series. Sis. I don't know what the plural of series is. So if you've never read them, one, I recommend them. I read them when I was a little kid and I love them. They are aimed at children, but the last couple of books in the Sep Heap series are aimed at a slightly older audience, like the kids who grew up on reading the first books. They're very good, and because the intended audience does skew younger, they're a fast read, but they also deal with some heavy themes later on. A lot of traumatized kiddos. Now that endorsement is out of the way, I have a second point, number two, which is that if you haven't read them, feel free to stop watching the video because it's aimed at people who are familiar with the series. I just figure that there may be some overlap between Sep Heap fans and people who watch my videos because I've done a lot of Sep Heap fan art and speed paints. I mean. Heck, Boy412 is my YouTube avatar, and I published a Sep Heap zine a few months back with 11 other contributors. Hey, collaboration! It was really fun to make. And now I'm running the second annual Midsummer Week celebration thing. Hopefully if you're still watching, you've read the series and you know how much of a key role Midsummer Day plays in the plot. This is a week-long art challenge starting on Midsummer Day, which is June 23rd. Every day has a prompt to inspire you to draw something, write something, make an aesthetic or a mood board, I don't know, just whatever you want to do to express yourself. I ran it last year, a bunch of people got involved, and we all had a blast making that good good Septimus Heap content, and Todd Hunter Moon content, and I'll leave in that trilogy out. But this year I am expanding the number of social media platforms that I am promoting the event on. I want to give everyone a fair warning, you have a month, that's a long time. You don't have to do every day, but I would love if you got involved somehow, even if it's just telling your friends about it because it's a small fandom and I really want to bring it together for this event. I think that it would be fun and great, and those are the only two adjectives I know. The information about the event and all of the prompts will be listed in a link in the description. The tiny URL is tinyurl.com slash midsummerweek2018, which is long for a tiny URL, I know. You can post whatever you make on the Sep Heap wiki, the subreddit, any form of social media. I am tracking all of it. Just use the hashtag MidsummerWeek. You can also tag me in whatever you'd post if you'd like. Uh, I would love that. A whole bunch of my social media is listed on my website, which is in the description. If you're on Twitter, you can tag Angie Sage. She would probably tolerate that. I don't know. Maybe she'd love it too. Depends on how many people do it, probably. But I would love if it were so many people that she got annoyed. <laughs> um, I'm only half kidding. But yeah, thanks for watching for the third time. I will be back with another commentary paint soon, hopefully. I have a lot of things I want to talk about. Bye.